All right. So let's uh, let's back up a little bit here. Um, let me make sure I got the vehicle information correct. 94 Chevy Suburban. Is this a 5.7 liter engine? It is. And it's a GMC, but it probably does like I know it's still GM, but uh, it is a GMC, not Chevy. Okay. And is this a 1500? 1500. It's an SLE 5.7 automatic two wheel drive. Okay, perfect. Tell me what's going on. Well, uh, uh, if you got a second, I'll, I'll start start over again with everything. Sure. I, uh, uh, the car quit. The car quit on me while I was driving, and it kind of shuttered off. You know, kind of like a fuel pump problem or something, but it wouldn't restart. And I had it towed to Firestone, and they told me the ECM was probably at fault. So I had it towed home here to my residence, and I figured I'd buy an ECM. Got an ECM and. And I've kind of learned a little bit in the last couple of weeks about ECMs a little bit more. But when, when I ordered it, I, I ordered it as close to, to you know, the eBay. It was off eBay. And it said it would fit my car. It was a little different number, you know, similar, but not the exact same service number or serial number. And uh, it started right up, you know, like instantly when I plugged it in, you know, unplugged the old one, plugged the new one in. Started it right up, drove it around the block for about 10 minutes, just warming it up, seeing how it worked. Everything seemed to work fine. I shut it off three days later, wouldn't start. So what happened was I took it out. I figured maybe it just, I don't know if I shorted something or this computer just went bad. So I sent it back and got another one. And now I've got the other one in the car and now there's no start anytime. And I have not changed the, the chip, you know, the little, inside the little uh, inspection window okay and so right now it cranks the but first time i did the first time i did not and then this this actually this time i did change the chip and nothing changed nothing changed old chip new chip old and back to the old so that's where i'm at right now okay and, it... and I, I i know a little bit about cars uh, i i i mean on the chevy suburban i don't know a whole bunch but i do know how to unplug them and plug them back in right and that's about all i really know how to do and, and if it's some kind of turning the key on and letting it sit for a minute i don't know all if there's a procedure or something maybe i just did wrong or if there's some kind of fuse in the engine compartment that maybe failed i haven't looked i don't know if there is a little like a main fuse somewhere the fuse to the to the ecm inside the cabin is hot okay so it just cranks and it doesn't start. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's been fine. Okay. No fire. Have we checked for spark and fuel while cranking it over? I'm sorry, what? Have we checked for spark and fuel? You know, I haven't since I've had all this problem because I knew it wasn't that the I knew it wasn't a, uh, a a problem with that. Like I said, it seems like it's all. There's never been a check engine light, and this guy diagnosed it on his machine at Firestone, and that's what he told me. And he told you that the ECM was bad? Yep. And do you know how, was there a code in the computer, you know, indicating that the computer no, no, or the prom was I, bad? I, I, uh, you know, he gave me a printout, but I couldn't understand anything. Okay. Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of dumbfounded about it. But the, all I know is the, the one that I got started it up. Right. You know, and then, it, like I said, three days later, it, um, it's dead in my driveway. So you, you said you tried to swap the old computer back? Is that right? Or the, the other computer back in or no? Uh, I, I think I did that. I'm getting kind of confused on swapping these things out. I'm getting pretty good about unplugging and plugging them back in. Right. But, you know, I'm about ready to. There's another one in on eBay that's got the exact same numbers. And I was going to send this one back, but I hate to keep sending these things back to them and get another one. And, uh, it's just, it's, you know. Well, <laughs> well, let me help you out, okay? So <laughs> rarely is the problem a faulty computer. Rarely. Yep. Especially on this engine. <laughs> so what we see all the time gotcha. is... Gotcha. Either the, usually the pickup inside the distributor goes bad, causing a no-start condition, 
the ignition module, the ignition coil, or the fuel pump? Okay, he, I, I, that was the first thing I did when it, when it died. I went and bought a coil because I, I checked, the, I did the first little initial no spark, unplugged it, and I didn't see any spark anywhere. So that's when I had it towed because I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know what else to do within a public parking lot. So I just had it towed just to uh, Firestone. And he told me a couple of days later after he finished diagnosing, goes, the coil's fine. It's not that. It's your ECM. I said, okay. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Are you going to are you gonna be trying to fix this yourself, or are you just going to have someone else do this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, unless it comes, unless it comes down to where I can't figure it out, and I'll just have it towed. Or okay. I don't know if I should go to a Chevrolet dealer or what I should do. But everything's in pretty good shape. I mean, I, I don't drive the vehicle that much. It's not an everyday car. Mm -hmm. It's just a, every other weekend I kind of drive it. I have trouble actually keeping the battery charged. But I bought a new battery before when all this went bad so I could have good power to try to troubleshoot it. Okay. I haven't used a jumper on <laughs> So uh, what was I going to tell you? I think that was – what else was I going to say? I, uh, just uh, dumbfounded about this thing. Uh, but yeah, other than that, I was just going to have it towed to some maybe a dealership, and let them figure it out. But I don't know. It's up the, just, the cap has been replaced, the rotor has been replaced, uh, plugs have been replaced, and like I said, when it's right, it starts right up. There's no spinning, you know, like for five seconds. It's, it fires up in a one second all the time mm -hmm. until the. And then, like I said, when I put the, the used eBay ECM in, it fired right up. Mystifying, huh? No, not really. <clears throat> let, me, let me help you out, all right? Uh, okay. So right now, what you need to do is determine if, it's, if it has spark or not. If it has spark, we need to see if it runs on starting fluid. You know, I mean, I, I mean, I know that. I know, I, yeah, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't think it's, yeah, I, it can't be that. I mean, <laughs> I even replaced the fuel pump, but, you know, about 30,000 miles ago. Uh, I don't know. Okay, so I'm, let me just help you out. <laughs> we have to run the test, okay? You have to what? We have to run the test. We have to. So I need to hook the yeah. Battery. I need to connect the battery, spin it over, and look for spark. Yes, correct. And if it has spark, see if it runs on starting fluid. If it doesn't have spark, then we go after the ignition system. Okay, let, let's let's visualize it has no spark. What's the next what's the next attack? When we check for power at the coil, if there is no power at the coil, then we go, we pull a wiring diagram of the ignition coil. If there is power at the coil and the coil's been replaced, then we go after the ignition module and the distributor. Okay, the old coil. I just when I what I did was I hooked up the new coil and just laid it because it mounts to the engine to the like the intake or mm -hmm. the engine. So instead of like bolting it all up, because I think you can, it even has to be popper if you're bolted to the full flange that's bolted to it. Right. So I just laid it there to check the spark, and it still had no spark at the Publix when I tried to spin it over. And that's when yeah, I had it towed. And he checked it out and said, there's nothing wrong with your coil. It's your ECM. So he hooked up the old coil, and the old coil fired it up when I put the eBay used ECM in. <clears throat> I, listen, hang on, hang on, time. I understand that, but that doesn't change my answer. <laughs> we still need to run the test. <laughs> okay. All right. So, so if, the coil, if the coil's not sparking, what is you said if, if something in the ignition? What's the next thing? Say, say that question again. Well, I mean, you said, you know, we're going to check for spark. Okay, I'm visualizing, I'm check, I checked for spark, and there's no spark. And then I went to the coil, checked for spark, which is what I did before all this happened, and there's no spark. And you said the next thing to check would be the wiring in the ignition. Yes, sir. Yep, we got to make sure it's got power. So what, what, what in the ignition? What am I checking in the ignition? So if there's no power, then we check the entire circuit 
up to that coil to see see where we're losing where we're losing power. So this this does yeah, have. I, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, time out, time out. Hang on, stop, stop, stop. You asked me a question and you won't let me finish, so I can't help you. So l- let me walk you through this process. Okay. All right. I need, I need you just to pay attention really closely. <laughs> So if there's no power at the coil, then we pull a wiring diagram of the power circuit going to the ignition coil, and we trace the problem down with, with a voltmeter. This vehicle does use fusible links, and I think, there's a, I think there's a fuse block that's bolted to the firewall under the hood, probably closer to the battery. I think it's on the passenger side. That's what we would check next. Okay, if we have power at the coil, but there's no spark, then we go towards the distributor. We check the ignition control module and we check the output of the distributor while cranking it over. All right, it should read seven tenths of a volt AC uh, volts while cranking it over if the pickup inside the distributor is good. That's where we go next. I think. Does that answer your question? Yeah. I got a connected to the ground. Is a fusible link on the positive side? Yes, sir. There's a fusible link on the on the power circuit. That is correct. And that is connected. It's just like all part of the connection on the positive. Well, it's it's. I believe it's connected to the fuse block, which is on the firewall, like I mentioned. But don't bother checking it until we've hang on. Don't bother checking it until we've we've actually confirmed that there's no power at the distributor. We're getting ahead of ourselves. So, okay. do you have a voltmeter? I do. I'm not real good at using it. My brother-in-law works on TV. So he's pretty good. I can get him to okay. look at it. But. So once you once you have your brother-in-law to, to help out, all you have to do is just turn the voltmeter on to the 20 volt DC scale. And then you're gonna just go, you know, to the to the coil and you're gonna check the wiring for battery voltage. The red lead goes to the wire that you're gonna check for power, and the black lead goes on a good known ground. I would go right to the battery, turn the key on, and make sure one of those wires at the coil has battery voltage, 12 volts. I've got a test light, but I, I, that's about all I've got. You can use a test light. But I tell you what, <clears throat> I'll let you work on that stuff. So we, that way we're not on the phone together for the next 30 minutes while we're checking these things. So what you can do is you can run these tests and, and then just and just let me know what you find. Okay, so I'm going to check the... Uh, the ohms first is what I should be checking. No, the first thing you need to do is check for spark. It's got to have bright blue spark on all the cylinders while cranking it over. If it has spark, then we see if it runs on starting fluid. Okay. I don't think it's going to have spark, but uh, just take a plug out and put a plug on it and just spin it over and see if it's going to spark. Yeah, you just take a wire off a spark plug, use a spark tester or a screwdriver, and then you know watch for bright blue spark as an assistant cranks it over. How about a test? How about a test light lead? Mm. Well, test light lead? Yeah, like, a, like put the test light to the, and then touch it, touch a ground somewhere. Well, <clears throat> a test light, you know, that that's checking for 12 volts. If you're talking about a standard 12 volt yeah. test light, we don't want to use that. Okay, gotcha. You know, we, we want to so use it. If I have a spare spark plug down in my basement, take the plug wire off, Spark plug on the end of the wire and put it somewhere where it's going to ground and see if it'll spark. Yeah, that'll work. Something like that. Okay. Yeah, yes, sir. Uh, okay, and then if it doesn't spark there, I go to the distributor and see if it sparks at the coil. I would go, yeah, I just go to the coil first, see if there's power at the coil, or you can even do that first before even checking for spark. It's up to you. Okay, so unplug the coil from the coil. And do the same thing. Put a spark plug in it and uh, see if it has spark spark. Well, there's a there's a connector at the coil that's going to have at least two wires, maybe right. three or four. I think it's got two from the ignition module. So we want to make sure that. Oh, you mean the wire itself. Yes. Not, not the coil itself, but the wire. 
Yeah, correct. Okay. Because it's got to have battery voltage in order to generate spark. I got you. Yeah, and, okay. and the battery voltage comes from that fusible link we talked about. I got you. Okay. So, uh, uh, I don't know what else I can do. All right, thanks for your help. All right, you bet. You're welcome. Good luck. Bye-bye.